can see you. I can see you fine. Yeah, I mean, it's not as laggy now. Let's do let's, it. Let's do it, Jay Suko. Mm -mm -mm. Ah, I can't wait. So Matt's good. He's enjoying it too. Everyone's enjoying it. It's also the weather is super ideal for me. It's like not hot. <laughs> yeah. And I am like the sweatiest woman in the entire world. So for it to be like a little bit like in the 70s pretty much every day. Mwah. I wonder what it gets like in the winter. It doesn't get super cold. No, it didn't even snow because I keep, I got here in November and it didn't even snow once. Damn, that's a humble brag. Which was actually, yeah. <laughs> like me with my no snow. <laughs> What's up, no snow? <laughs> what up, no snow? Yeah, it was weird to have it not snow after being in Chicago for 11 years. Like, it actually was a little sad, like, to not have Christmas and there be, like, flurries or something. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. But don't you feel you kind of brace yourself for the winter and even though it's not going to come, you're like, okay. Yeah, even my winter coat is like, you ride your bike, so you're just sweating even in the winter. So you just don't need the same thing. So I like brought all this stuff because I moved here in the winter and then I didn't use a single freaking thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't get rid of it because the moment you do is when you're going to need it. Is when I'm going to need it, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, pick a number between 1 and 54. 54? Is that what? how many suggestions there are? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's Holy right. Holy cowzers. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Let's do 51. It's the number oh, of Bernie well. Williams, who used to be my favorite Yankee player for no reason. <sighs> Way to go, 51. Let's see, 54, 53, 52. All right, so this comes from Tanine, and it's, do you know her? She's based in... Yeah, Tanine's in Amsterdam. Yeah. She's great, by the way. Uh, yeah, she's know. lovely. Uh, and it's the sharper, the better is the suggestion. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, Tanine. You look amazing. Now I was gonna say the same <laughs> thing. What you? You're... I was, I was gonna go. wait for you to say it to me, but I, I had to see it to you. You look amazing, seriously. It's a new shirt, and I got a new hat, uh, and I feel oh great. My... Yeah, you look great. You look absolutely great. Are you still doing that? Is it what is it? That keto thing? Yeah, I'm on the keto diet. Uh, wow. And uh, I, I dropped 35 pounds in the last four months. So, yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. I didn't want to say I noticed, but I noticed. Yeah. I mean, you know, you look sharp. You feel sharp. You are sharp. I, my energy. Yeah. My energy. Let me tell you something. Talia, my energy through the roof. Uh, you could tell. I mean, there is something that is, you have like this unique glow about you I haven't seen in years. Really? Yeah. It's, you feel it, but then you're like, ah, it's weird. You feel it, but then you think, do people notice it? But then in one end, you're like, I don't care if they notice it. I feel it. Yeah. Yeah, Stu, I have to be honest with you. Yeah, please. The last few years, and, and listen, I am one of those people that I, like bless you for doing a diet i don't believe in diet culture because it it is tough but yeah. when you do it for health reasons i am so on board but just the last few years there's just been something about you that felt a little dim and i just want that i want that explosion back from you Stu. yeah i'll, I'll be honest um tell you my uh, ever since you know i i went through the breakup and lost the business yeah. like it was like one thing after another is i mean it was I don't know if you realize it was five years ago today. I got divorced five years ago today. Oh my. Yeah. Five years already. Five years. And it, then it just, that led to me losing my job. Uh, I lost uh, touch with my kid. Like yeah. it just was like one thing after another. And then a string of just terrible, terrible failed relationships one after the other. Yeah. 
that were the same. It was the same person, just a different person. You know what I mean? Same person, yeah. different person. Yeah. And See, I if you were to put my partners in like a police lineup, there's not two that are the same. Oh, yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, you always wanted variety. Yeah, because it's a, and it's, it's an experiment, Stu. It's like, you don't know what you want until you have it. So you got to kind of just test the waters, you know? And uh, I, I feel, I feel. Uh, Say it. Say it. I just, I want you to be happy, Stu. Yeah. And I know that you fell on hard times and especially when things are one after or another i know how that can kind of that can kind of snowball you know yeah um and i'm really sorry about that and i i should have called and i i feel like a huge dick i feel like i have been a real dicky friend and i'm really sorry about it i i have several moments where i was like you know what tell you just call him and every time i picked up the phone i just I wasn't sure quite what to say, but I, uh, I'm just so glad we're finally doing this. It probably felt like a mountain to you. Like yeah. once you thought about it, then it got worse and worse. And yeah. then it was like, I should. And then you just, it didn't. And then days pass and then weeks and months. I mean, you know how time goes, so I don't have to explain. Yeah. But although sometimes I feel like I don't know what time goes because five years since the divorce, Holy shit, that flew by. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, we're at a point now where like we can look back on it and laugh and we're still, we're good friends and, and you know, the relationship, I think we're better off this way, but man, for those, for those five years, I was lost. And so it's kind of a good thing you didn't pick up the phone in the last few months mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, last year at this time, I was, I was, if I feel sharp now, I was the most dull I'd been. And I had to look at myself in the mirror and say, now's the time. Am I going to make a change or not? And then, and then that became like your call. That became overwhelming. And then I didn't want to. I was like, every day, yeah. every night was my last night of something. This is the last yeah. night I, I, I'm going to have ice cream. This is the last night I'm going to drink. This is all, it was all, I had a whole string of last nights. I've definitely been through that before. Yeah. I know how that feels. I'm, I'm talking a lot about me. What about you? Like, like oh gosh, you? You, I don't want to, I don't even want to. How's your, boutique? I'm, how's your boutique doing? I haven't asked a thing about that. It's good. It's number one in the city. Of course it is. It's not, but it's, it's not a big, I think I should have called you, Stu, my God. Well, you can't go, unless you can go back in time. Can't yet. I mean, Working so, on it, <laughs> right? I, I'll be honest. There were times where I, where I really could have used you. Like I was like, oh, there's one person. If there's anybody on this earth that I could talk to who would understand what I'm going through and give me some words of advice, Talia would be it. So yeah, there were some times where I was like, oh, I wish what. And then I thought, what did I do wrong? And then it was a shame. No, spiral. no, you did nothing wrong. Like and, and Stu, there were so many times I thought about you. I went to a baseball game uh, three weeks ago and there was a man uh, that had a pickle on his show and he said, I'm the real deal. And I was like, Stu would love this shirt. That's Stu my would shirt. absolutely flip out if he saw this man. And uh, there's just been tiny glimpses of that where it's just like, no one is going to laugh with me the way that Stu laughs with me about something so ridiculous. Yes. And laughter's so important. It's so important. And laughing with you is so important. Yeah. You, you're a belly laugher. When I laugh with you, it's a <laughs> belly laugh. You belly laugh and I laugh with <laughs> you. So Get out of here. No, it's a down <laughs> laugh. No. Oh, God. I do. I am one of those people. I went to go see a movie recently. I went to go see the new Jumanji. Actually, honestly, very good. That's what I, I had, heard. I had no idea what to expect. Loved the first one. Loved the Robin Williams. I'm just like a huge Jumanji fan. And I went to see is it. That, is that how you say Jumanji? Yes. Is that a Jumanji? I never know Jumanji. how to say it. 
Okay, it's Jumanji. 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 Yeah, I'm not sure the, either. You put it Jumanji. on the Jew, the, the emphasis on the Jew Jumanji. part of the Jumanji, Jumanji, or is it Jumanji? Jumanji. 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 Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Anyways, you know, um, oh gosh, you know The Rock? Oh, yeah, I'm a, uh, this is my favorite movie star, of course. Oh my gosh, me too. What a career. And he does. He does so many funny things in that movie, and I laughed so hard <laughs> too, that the entire theater it was like one, two, three, boom. They were all looking at me, and I'm just having the time of my life. Uh, I just could not have been laughing harder, and I was like, you know, who would think this is funny. Yeah, and I yeah. wouldn't care if they said anything. I would say, mind your own business. We're just yeah. having fun here. <sighs> I miss you. Yeah, I miss you too. I mean, it's it's crazy oh. that today I decided to come in this elevator. You came in, and then it stopped, and we had to talk. Yeah, that's uh, that's the universe for you. <laughs> you can't. Oh, you know what, what? Stu? I've been actually been dying to tell you this. My kids, they're going to they're going to camp. Wait, they're going to cat camp? Or you, your, kids, going to... your kids are? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said cats first. I was like, that's fun. But your kids are going to camp? They're going to camp just like we did. Wow. They're go Do you think they're going to meet friends like we met at camp? God, I hope so. That's my only. Oh, God. And they so many changes since we went there, too. Uh, so, so funny. I got the brochure in the mail. It doesn't even look like the same camp, but our initials are still in the tree. Wow. Meant to be. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I took, I took Sally on a, a tour of the camp two weeks ago with Bill and, uh, Follow I went to it. go up the mountain and see the, the tree and they were still there. So I mean, she's, she's going to be like, a, just like we were having the best summer of our lives, you know? Wow. Yeah. Wow. So she might carve her initials in the tree. And then maybe afterwards she would leave. <laughs> She'd leave like, like the tree leaves. She would leave. Oh, <laughs> You are absolutely ridiculous. You are absolutely ridiculous with your wordplay. <laughs> oh, God. He's back at it. <laughs> he I never miss. left, apparently. No. Never yeah. left. I, I miss you. I miss you, too. Hey. Scene. <laughs> uh, you know what? What? You're like one of my favorite all-time people to play with. Oh my goodness, same. Oh, goes back to blender dates, Jay. Yeah. yeah, and those, when Jay Steigman threw a bunch of people together and it was then like, that was one of the, my most favorite shows to do because- I look forward had, to that every single weekend. It was just, it was a show where if I was on the sidelines, I was just enjoying watching as much as I was playing. It was so great. Yeah, I think it was that show that I had to like really start to train myself to not laugh through every single scene because playing with you and John Hildreth literally slayed me. Like, and we, and I remember, I don't even think I ever played a human ever in any of those scenes. I remember us having like some kind of like weird alien love yeah. scene. Yeah, totally. And, and, robots and monsters it just was like it was so fun and so freeing and just like such a like diverse and unique point of view yeah ensemble and like anything goes when when we play together and that's to me that that trust is irreplaceable where it's like you're gonna if you go there i'll go there and vice versa and like you 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 say that before a show a lot of times with people but how often do you really 
how often do you really feel it, especially when you first start performing? Like, I think it's very important to have that to help with your confidence. And so uh, yeah. you don't get that, you know, and that, that's what makes me sad is when people have experiences that are opposite to that. Yeah. I, I mean, the one thing that I just like try to tell my students all the time is all I want to do is make this easy and fun for you. And you already have everything that you could ever need. So how do you just have the most fun that like, I, like, I was like, if you get mad when someone edits your scene, like, that's a good place to be in. <laughs> yes. You're like, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's funny you mentioned Hildreth, too, because, like, he's one guy. I just had a conversation with him last week, this past weekend, and he is the ultimate yes-ander. He's like, yes. nothing's out of bounds. Um, I will yes and whatever. And it's true. I've never seen anyone who doesn't judge anything on stage. And then yeah. goes with it. And you're like that too. Like you don't judge what's happening. You find the fun in it. And then when it's not fun, you're like, all right, I'm out of here. Like you'll just like, <laughs> which I think is so important to be like, okay, cool. Like I got more, I have, I have better things to do than to try and fight or struggle with what's going on. It's so much more fun just to, yeah. to go with it. Yeah. And I feel like uh, we've been really lucky to not only play together so much like even in Denmark when we get to play Jamie and Connor and yeah and uh, it was like so easy and so playful yeah. and it just like I was constantly surprised by everything and I like to be in that mode so because if you if you know where it's going that's like annoying <laughs> it's like <laughs> I want to never know what's around the river bend and like just <laughs> And some of those scenes, I mean, some of them are on film. Some of those are the freaking funniest things I've ever, ever been a part of. Do you, have you always been someone as an improviser who wanted to be surprised like that? Or early on, did you find that you were more comfortable, like kind of knowing or dictating what was happening? Um, I don't, that's a great question. I feel like I don't really quite remember right from the beginning. Like I remember when I first started improvising, I was like so character based and because of because I put on so much character I think that I was surprised by the things that I had said because I was always going through like a character lens yeah and it wasn't until I had kind of take like found the like power behind how incredible it is to like do real relatable grounded scenes that I uh like those discovery moments almost are so much more powerful to me than you know doing big goofy characters so i think uh, i think it definitely has changed throughout um but i would much rather be in pure discovery mode where i walk off stage and either can't believe what happened yeah. or can't remember what happened <laughs> <laughs> and having like the the skill set to go oh this seems like a fun time to be a big bold character choice and oh this seems like a fun time to play them uh, you know yeah. something more closer to them than to me like any of those can work you're just making a choice in the moment yeah the the variety of uh theatrical pieces i think is really really important and something that i started to really closely look out just like even in the last like five years yeah. it stemmed from doing musicals of like great if we know that this is a villain scene it's got to be some other kind of scene but i think um being able to know energy like what the energy what energy the piece needs or um you know what kind of what type of characters or what type of gameplay stuff like that so that the whole piece feels really different i think is super important and I think that's a, a, I think that is something people, as they begin to improvise more and more, start seeing the importance of you're playing the piece. So what, mm -hmm. what does it need? Like, we just came off of this thing. What do we need here can help dictate what you're going to do. And it's less haphazard and it's more mm -hmm. focused of like, oh, we've had a whole bunch of character stuff or big fast scenes. Maybe we slow it down here with like a more grounded yeah. relationship scene. And then we can ramp back up again. Yeah, exactly. Um, how did you get into improv? Like, what brought you? How did you find out about it? How did you start taking classes or doing shows? Um, so I was, I grew up doing theater, like a lot of musical theater. Um, from when I was uh, nine, I think, was wow. my first musical. Yeah, so I was like a big 
stupid precocious kid um and uh when, it wasn't until i was actually i had done a bunch of improv and not known it was improv for a very long time of i was doing theater and they were like play around with the lines or you know i had done like like some short form in high school not knowing that it was even improv yeah. like yeah you know, just stuff I had seen on Whose Line Is It Anyway as a part of like theater nights or whatever. But it wasn't until I actually was a senior at university that I say university now because I too. live in Europe. Me <laughs> too, cool. me too. She's very cool. Um, that the woman who um, was essentially my mentor in, in university, um, which was actually an older nun. And I don't come from a very religious background but I went to a school that was in the Catholic tradition, which this means nothing for my improv story at all, other than a nun was the one who told me that I was funny and needed to go. Okay. Um, and she handed me a brochure to Second City and she was like, you should go and take a class. So for, um, I did a five day intensive at Second City on improv and writing um, in the winter in January of 2009. It was like negative 20 degrees out. And I was like, if I could survive this week, I could do anything. <laughs> I met some of my favorite people in the entire world and literally never looked back. I was like, I have to save up all my money and need to move here. And I need to immerse myself in this for the rest of my life. <laughs> Where were you living then? New York, Long Island. Wow. Wow. So you came, oh my goodness. And then you, yeah. you took classes there. You eventually started teaching there you you now teach all over the world and you're you're based in Amsterdam now and yeah. um you're actually at a really cool theater in Amsterdam like what yeah. brought you, what brought you to boom how'd you get how'd you <laughs> make that transition yeah it's um I was actually here about a year and a half ago just on a European tour, teaching musical yeah. improv kind of all over Europe. And I uh, taught an advanced music workshop for the Boom Chicago cast. And so three of those folks that I had taught a year and a half ago are in the cast still currently. And I taught a workshop with Sasha Hudemacher, who's like the most brilliant music director. He's amazing. Yeah, he's great. And um, stayed in touch with everyone. And then when I was just this past September, I went on another tour and I came through the Netherlands, taught some workshops, stopped in Amsterdam for two nights, guested in two shows with the cast because I had known them from last year. And um, yeah, the director, the artistic director was at the show and um, like 24 hours before I guested, one of the women had just put in her notice that she was leaving in November. And he asked me on the spot after the show to join the cast and to move what? to Amsterdam. What? It was insane. <laughs> so I called Matt from Amsterdam and I was like, hey, honey, how are you? And he's like, good, what do you want? And I was like, uh, do you wanna to move to Amsterdam? And he was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> and so we, yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead. No, so we moved here in November. I moved here a week earlier than Matt. And then one of our other members who was in the cast put his notice in December and was leaving in February. And Matt and I did our duo show, Going Steady. And our artistic director watched that show and invited Matt to join the cast in February. Oh my God, that's so great. And so now yeah. you're back in Amsterdam. Yeah, it's insane. And there's a cast of five. Um, so we're all really close knit and we do a huge volume of work together. So it's like, um, ship days. Did you do a, sh a cruise ship? Oh no, no, no. Because I, I, you're so smart. <laughs> well, not that I like, it was a great gig for improvisers cause you got paid the most of yeah. the gig, but, uh, I had done an all inclusive resort. I worked at a, a, a club med for a year basically. So the all inclusive resort thing or the being on a ship. I had already done and I was like, eh, unless I was able to like choose who I was going to go with. And I was also, you know, I was married and it just didn't, yeah. the, the time didn't work. Uh, but yeah, I, the, the cruise ship was, was, I mean, the, the, the experience I had at Club Med was, was great because you met people and you, you were around them that you became instant friends very quickly. Yeah, exactly. And it's the same exact thing with, uh, both the cruise ship and being a, part of a small cast that, that gets formed because I'm so used to being in ensembles in Chicago 
that either I've formed or are comprised of people that I know that I want to work with. And so it's a whole different ball game when you're put into an ensemble because it is like really figuring out how your playing styles work with one another with different training and, yeah. and it's exciting. It's, it's really, it's nice that after improvising for over 10 years to have a, a like to be challenged and to grow and to continue to grow. That's, I think, super important. And that's what this kind of transition has really done for me. And, you know, it's great to like, also, there's a great feeling, I bet, in being asked and not being the one asking. Yeah, because I am a garbage improviser in, in, in auditions. <laughs> I am the worst. I am, I've never, ever had a good improv audition aside from anything musical improv um because i just i admittedly just get so nervous yeah and i just i mean i haven't auditioned for something in years so who knows what it would be like now but every single second city general i did i went home and i cried the entire day because i just was like i can't do this i don't i can't function how can i be so fine on stage and then in this setting just a, such a garbage person um <laughs> and so it was really nice to not audition and to and for my audition to be a show and to see yeah. me in my element and be noticed from that that was like thank god because if i auditioned for you <laughs> i wouldn't be here and and those are better auditions anyway if you, uh, if you're gonna have an audition it's better to see you in a exactly. show than like go and do those generals which you, I would say 95 to 99% of the people who've done those Second City General general auditions go home and have the same experience you do. Cry, yeah. are like, I'm a garbage performer, I'll never do this, I'm not good at this. Like, I, I think very few people come out of those auditions going like, yeah, I crushed it, yeah. And even, yeah, the, ones no. who say, I, even the ones who say I crush it, don't get the call. And they're like, what? I did so well. So. Auditions are, are a tricky thing. And some people can audition really well and are terrible in shows. And some people, like, yeah. I'm really good at a callback. If I get a callback. Same. I got it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm because not. I know that they want me there. Yeah. And there's something about that that I'm like, they're on my side. They want me. And so I have this confidence. But the first one, there's just so much proving yourself. It's like, let me pr prove to you the way I pretend. And it's just like, <laughs> so it's just like mind boggling to me. Let me prove how I pretend. I love that. <laughs> That's yeah. so true. Uh, where can people follow you if they want to, you know, take a class from you or see some of your shows? Like, what's the best way through social media that people can do that? Yeah. Um, so uh, I have a professional page that I usually post all of my stuff um, or my personal page. I don't know, friends. Um, but everything is at Stacy Smith Comedy. So S-T-A-C-E-Y-S-M-I-T-H Comedy. And that's also my website. My website is either StacySmithComedy.com or StaceJam.com. They both go there. Woo! Stace Jam. Stage Jam, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention that. That's your one-person musical that you just go and do, and it's amazing. It's, it's brilliant. It's always, the times I've seen it, standing ovation, and deservedly so. It's so good. Thank you. I really like doing it, and I think once I started doing it, was another growth moment. Like, I just can't recommend growing enough. <laughs> like, it's like so easy to be complacent when you've yes. been doing the same things over and over for so many years. So I think creating new form and creating new opportunities for yourself is like just so freaking important. Well, I love you to death and you're the best. I can't uh, wait to see you again. I love you, Jay. Give my, best, you give my best to Matt and Rob and all the folks over there. I will. And you really do look so nice. I love that orange shirt. <laughs> Thank you. It's my, okay. It's my son. Truth and comedy. Right? Well, look at you. Look at you all profession, even in this setting. <laughs> I got a blazer on. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, my friend. Bye. <laughs>